Okay, let's go with uh, part two, the ultimate revolution, Brave New World, Berkeley speech. I have kinesiology tape here, 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 and here. See it? It's for vagus nerve activation. Anyway, that's besides the point. I was out at a festival all day sweating and I want to do this a little bit more of this video quick. <laughs> Uh, 1984 pattern, they will be a good year nearer, not because of any humanitarian qualms in the scientific dictators, but simply because the Brave New World pattern is probably a good deal more efficient than the other. But if you can uh, get people to consent to the state of affairs in which they are living, the state of servitude, the state of being, having their differences ironed out and being made uh, uh, amenable to mass production methods on the social level, if you can do this, then you have, uh, you are likely to have a much more stable, a much more lasting society, uh, a much more easily controllable society than you would if you were relying wholly on clubs and firing squads and concentration camps. Uh, so that uh, my own feeling is that the 1984 picture uh, was so he's saying consent is much easier than the iron fist, ruling with the iron fist. Tinged, of course, by the immediate uh, past and the present in which uh, Orwell was living, but that the, uh, that the past and present of those years does not represent, I feel, uh, the likely trend of what is going to happen. Needless to say, we shall never get rid of terrorism. This will always um, find its way to the surface. But I think that uh, insofar as uh, dictators become more and more scientific, more and more concerned with a technically perfect, uh, perfectly running society, they will be more and more interested in the kind of techniques which uh, uh, I imagined and described from existing realities uh, in Brave New World. So that uh, uh, it seems to me then that uh, this ultimate revolution is really not very far away, that we already the a number of the techniques for uh, bringing about this kind of control are here. And it remains to be seen uh, when and where and by whom uh, they will first be applied uh, in any large scale. And first, uh, let me talk about uh, a little bit about the improvement even in the techniques of, of terrorism. Uh, I think there, there have been improvements. Uh, the uh, the um, uh, Pavlov, after all, made some extremely profound observations, both on animals and on human beings. And he found, among other things, that uh, uh, that uh, conditioning uh, techniques apply to animals or humans in a state either of psychological or of physical stress uh, sank in, so to say, very deeply into the mind-body of the creature and were extremely difficult to get rid of, that they seem to be embedded more deeply than, than other forms of conditioning. And um, this, of course, uh, this fact, I think, was discovered empirically in the past, people did make use of, uh, of many of these uh, techniques. But uh, the difference between the, the old empirical intuitive methods and our own methods is the difference between uh, a sort of hit and miss uh, uh, craftsman's point of view and the genuinely scientific point of view. I mean, I think there is a real uh, difference between ourselves and say the inquisitors of the 16th century, we know much more precisely what we are doing uh, than they knew and we can extend, because of our theoretical knowledge, we can extend uh, what we are doing over a wider area with a greater assurance of, of, uh, of being, uh, producing something which really works. In this context I would uh, uh, like to mention the 
extremely interesting chapters in uh, uh, Dr. William Sargent's uh, um, Battle for the Mind, where he uh, points out how intuitively uh, some of the great uh, religious uh, uh, teachers, leaders of the past, uh, hit on the Pavlovian method. He, he speaks specifically of uh, Wesley's method of producing conversions, uh, which were essentially based upon a, a technique of, of heightening psychological stress to the limit by talking about hellfire, and so making people extremely vulnerable to suggestion. Unreal. And then suddenly releasing this stress by offering the hopes of heaven. And uh, this is a very interesting chapter of showing how uh, how completely, so on, a, on purely intuitive and empirical grounds, a, a skilled natural psychologist, as Wesley was, uh, could discover these uh, Pavlovian uh, methods. Well, as I say, we now know the reason why these techniques worked, and uh, uh, there is no doubt at all that we can, if we want to, uh, carry them much further uh, than was possible in the past. And, of course, in the uh, history of uh, recent history of, of brainwashing, both as applied to uh, prisoners of war and to the uh, lower personnel within the Communist Party in China, uh, we see that the Pavlovian methods have been applied systematically and with, with uh, evidently with extraordinary efficacy. I mean, I think that can be no doubt that Pavlovian methods are akin to Hegelian dialect. It sort of, I guess. Uh, Pavlovian, you ring a bell, the dog salivates, right? I think that was that experiment. So if you ring the bell, you get rewarded. And then the Hegelian dialect is like, we're going to create the problem and the solution. So you're going to go for the solution like the dog goes for the bell and the snack or whatever it was. I can barely remember. Um, so, I mean, they're similar in structure in that you're traumatizing in Hegelian dialect. Anyway, you're traumatizing the human mind and then you're going to turn around the same people that are traumatizing are going to turn around and they're, they're going to say oh my god we have the solution take this injection <laughs> right take this injection and everything's going to be fine if the dog rings the bell he gets his snack so i guess it's like behavior modification they're two different, they're very different methods, but they're behavior modification nonetheless. But, uh, by the application of these methods, a very large army of totally devoted people has been created. The, the conditioning has been driven in, so to say, uh, by kind of psychological iontophoresis. Uh, into the very depth of the uh, uh, people's being and has got so deep that it's very difficult for it ever to be rooted out. And uh, these uh, methods, I, I think, are a real... Uh, I mean, how weak do you have to be to have these methods work in the first place? I mean, listen, in the beginning of this communist push, I was terrified. I fell for it. I was I was pretty, you know, strung out for a while. And then the more research I did, I became more strung out by how dirty the medical establishment was. Like I eventually didn't fear the virus as much as I feared getting it and having to go to the hospital and getting killed right with because they weren't allowing therapeutics that were actually working i mean how evil is that it's so unfathomable right 
And I think that's the that was the crux of my mental suffering in 2020 was the realization that we were being fed bad data and then you couldn't trust a medical professional <laughs> to save your life or to do the right thing or to, you know, it was like there was so much misinformation and such an agenda to make money that it became like a mind fuck no matter which way you looked at it. And that scientific tyranny, which Huxley talks, you know, he refers to that that science level of control a lot. A refinement on the older methods of terror because they combine methods of terror with methods of, of uh, acceptance method that the, the person who he is subjected to a form of, of terroristic stress uh, but uh, for the purpose of inducing a kind of voluntary quotes um, yeah. acceptance of uh, the state and uh, the psychological state into which he has been driven and the state of affairs within which he finds himself so that as I say there has been I think a, a definite improvement because during this massive psyop, it like the stress was twofold. Every second on the news, everybody's dying. Refrigerator trucks in New York. Meanwhile, I know people who live near those hospitals that claim to be so overwhelmed, and people are like, "It's just fucking normal there." I don't know what you're talking about, right? To get the God, I'm losing the word, but to have such a massive uh, psyop go into so many different outlets like the media, the medical establishment, the political arena, the UN, uh, you know, it was like worldwide psyop where they employed so many different angles of terror right to enact this experiment to see who's going to comply who's who's going to be the first one to be tempted by a free hamburger to inject their body with like a an unknown substance i mean it's really quite outrageous when you think about it it's it's outrageous on every fucking level shall we say uh, in the even in the techniques of, of terrorism well then we come to um, consideration of other techniques of, of non-terroristic techniques for uh, inducing consent and for uh, inducing people to love oh. their servitude. Yeah. Uh, this says I do here, not I mean, consent. I, think we can, <laughs> I don't think I can possibly go into all of them because I don't know all of them, but I mean, I can mention a few of the more obvious uh, uh, methods uh, which uh, uh, can now be used and which uh, are based upon recent scientific findings. Uh, first of all, there are the um, methods connected with uh, straight suggestion and uh, and hypnosis. I think we know much more about this subject than was was known in the past. People, of course, have always known about suggestion, and although they didn't know the word hypnosis, uh, they certainly practiced it mm -hmm. in uh, various ways. But we uh, have, I think, a much greater knowledge of the the subject than in the past, and we we can make use of our knowledge in ways which uh, I think the past was probably never able to make use of make use of it uh, for example one of the things we have we now know for certain is that there is uh, of course an enormous I mean this has been always known a very great uh, difference between individuals in regard to their suggestibility 
But we now, I think, uh, know pretty clearly the, the sort of statistical structure of a population in regard to its uh, to its uh, suggestibility. Obedience. Uh, it's very interesting uh, when you look at the the findings in different fields. I mean, in the field of hypnosis, in the field of uh, administering placebos, for example, uh, in the field of general uh, suggestion uh, in states of drowsiness or of light sleep. States of drowsiness are more susceptible. The theta state, alpha to the theta state. A child is in like, a, I think, a theta state until they're like seven years old. So you have to be very careful when you're raising your child. Fill their head with like positive thoughts. <laughs> Tell them they can do anything until they're seven years old at least. Give them that confidence that everybody deserves, you know? But I'm going to stop this here because I do need to do some things. And um, I just wanted to cover more of this speech and... Aldous Huxley is very uh, interesting. He was an interesting character. I will say that. Very complex. And it, while it appears that he is a staunch promoter of freedom, I don't know. Sometimes he, he feels like controlled up, you know? Very interesting.